I have with me uh, Stephen Sizer, who is a retired uh, Church of England vicar, but he is also the founder and director of the Peacemaker Trust, which is concerned with issues of justice, peace, uh, understanding between different religions in the Middle East uh, and in particular in, in Palestine and Israel. Stephen has written extensively about Christian Zionism. His PhD was on the topic. So I'm going to ask Stephen to explain what Christian, Zion, uh, Christian Zionism is uh, and why it is important in the politics of Israel and Palestine. Stephen, you're welcome. And um, can I ask you first, can you describe what is Christian Zionism? Thank you, John. Um, well, at its simplest, Christian Zionism is Christian support for Zionism. The driving principle of Christian Zionism is the belief that the secular state of Israel is somehow the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. Uh, they're convinced that the, the founding of the state of Israel in 1948, the capture of Jerusalem in 1967, together with the Sinai, the, the Golan Heights, and the Palestinian West Bank, they, they see these as miraculous fulfillments of God's promises made to Abraham that he would establish Israel as a Jewish nation forever. Um, at the same time, you can see Christian Zionism as a, 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 as a colonial experiment, if you like, um, because its origins um, go way, way back to the 19th century. Can you tell us how it did develop? And I, I understand that uh, actually uh, England and Ireland were very important in that, but can you describe how it arose and uh, how it's developed uh, over the last uh, 150 years? Well, before uh, the beginning of the 19th century, the, the way the traditional denominations viewed uh, uh, the Old Testament was that it, it was the precursor to the coming of Jesus and that the Old Testament promises were fulfilled in Jesus. And, um, and the church, which, uh, which grew from Pentecost, was made up of all nations. So the one people of God, uh, made up of Jews and Gentiles, who believed in Jesus. Uh, but at the beginning of the uh, 19th century, you see a group of uh, rather eccentric Christian leaders in, in, in England, particularly in Scotland and in Ireland, um, beginning to teach that uh, God had two chosen peoples, a separate uh, plan for the Jewish people. Um, one of the founders of, of this movement, um, John Nelson Darby, was a Church of Ireland minister. Um, and, uh, and you know, he insisted that God had a heavenly people, that was the church, and an earthly people, that was the Jews. And therefore, promises that were made uh, to the Jewish people in the Old Testament, he believed, uh, were or would be fulfilled literally among the Jewish people uh, of his generation. And his ideas uh, were picked up by other uh, eccentric Christian leaders in Britain. Um, Edward Irving was another leader of this movement, uh, one of the precursors to the Pentecostal movement. And, um, and then a, a number of conferences were arranged in, uh, in Surrey at the home of Henry Drummond, who was a high sheriff and banker. Uh, a member of parliament. And then these conferences were taken up by uh, Lady Powers Court in Ireland, uh, prophetic conferences about the end of the world and the place of, uh, of the Jewish people within that. Now, this was the beginning of the 19th century and it saw the birth of uh, the London Jew Society, for example. Um, but by the middle of the 19th century, you find uh, the movement gaining traction, not simply within churches, uh, but uh, within the political establishment, uh, because Palestine was increasingly becoming strategic to competing British, French and colonial interests in the Middle East. And so we could argue that uh, it was called restorationism uh, before Zionism, restorationism in the sense of restoring the Jews to their land. So we could say proto-Christian Zionism preceded Jewish Zionism by more than 50 years. 
Shaftesbury, for example, Lord Shaftesbury was talking about uh, a land with no people for a people with no land long before it was uh, being used by the early Zionists. Indeed, Theodor Herzl, uh, some of his strongest advocates were uh, Christian clergy, like the Reverend William Heschler, who is the Anglican chaplain to the British Embassy in Vienna. In Herzl's diary, he, he records a conversation with uh, the Reverend Heschler, and Heschler allegedly said, we prepared the ground for you, meaning we Christians prepared the ground for you Jews. So we can argue that uh, Christian Zionism preceded Jewish Zionism by, by 50 years. Uh, but it was, as I said earlier, a, a legacy of uh, European uh, colonial expansion. Mm. <clears throat> it's interesting that the, uh, the first governor of Mandate Palestine, British Mandate Palestine, um, said he wanted to create uh, a little loyal Jewish Ulster in the Middle East, in a, a sea of potentially hostile Arabism. Um, so he was sort of using the, um, the, the Jews uh, for his own imperial purposes. But can we, can we go on and ask, why is Christian Zionism important today for relationships between Israel, Palestine, the search for peace uh, in the region? The reason for that is that uh, this uh, theological worldview um, has uh, profound political consequences, and we see this particularly in US foreign policy today, which is in some senses uh, the development of, of European colonial interests in the Middle East as, as Britain and France and Germany's influence in the colonies declined, America's role in the Middle East uh, grew. Um, but let me just take you through some of the key theological convictions and how they have political consequences. The belief that Jews remain God's chosen people leads Christian Zionists to seek to bless Israel in political ways, material ways. And this uh, invariably results in uncritical endorsement of Israel's uh, policies, its apartheid policies, and, and the denigration of, of uh, Palestinian rights. Uh, the belief that the Jews are God's chosen people and uh, therefore the, the restoration of Jewish people to Palestine is actively encouraged by Christian organizations, Christian Zionist organizations. The emigration of Jews from Russia, for example, uh, funded by uh, Christian Zionist organizations. Uh, Christian Zionists believe that uh, Israel delineated uh, by the borders God gave through Abraham from the, the, uh, the river uh, of the Euphrates to the Nile, if you like, belongs exclusively to the Jewish people. And therefore the land must be annexed, it must be colonized. And therefore uh, Christian Zionists invariably justify these, uh, the illegal Jewish settlements. Uh, and, and justify the, uh, the confiscation of Palestinian land. Jerusalem is uh, obviously um, a very controversial subject, and we saw that with uh, Donald Trump's recognition of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. But this is the consequence of decades of lobbying by Christian Zionists in the, in the US, calling on America to move its embassy to Jerusalem so that other nations would have to do the same and by de facto recognize Jerusalem as the exclusive undivided capital of the Jewish people, not uh, a, a shared city. Even more controversial than that, you find uh, within some Christian Zionist circles the belief that the Jewish temple must be rebuilt before Christ returns and therefore you find uh, sympathy for and funding for uh, some of the uh, Jewish temple movements, uh, Jewish uh, Temple Mount Faithful, for example, uh, from, uh, from Christian churches, uh, justifying the destruction of the Dome of the Rock and rebuilding of the Jewish temple. It was a, I think it was in the 1980s, there was a fire started uh, in, the, uh, in the Dome of the Rock. And it was, it was by, I think, an Australian Christian who believed that this was the way to bring back uh, Jesus. And, and as we said earlier, their, their worldview tends to be very pessimistic. 
And, uh, you know, if you are convinced that the Bible says the end of the world is coming, it's coming soon, there'll be a war of Armageddon, then you read the newspapers in the light of that. You see events in Iran or you see events in in um, in uh, other parts of the world where where war is on the on the horizon and you try and interpret them in the light of, uh, of scripture. So invariably, Christian Zionists oppose the United Nations. They see any idea of trading land for peace as a compromise and must be resisted if uh, they are to fulfill God's purposes. Thanks for that. Uh, can we just perhaps conclude by going back to the Irish contribution to Christian Zionism in the person of John Darby Nelson? Uh, he was briefly uh, a curate in County Wicklow, um, but he fell out with his bishop and he went on then to found the Plymouth Brethren. He fell out with the Plymouth Brethren and went on to found the Exclusive Brethren. Um, and he made many journeys to America, as well as several journeys to Switzerland and France. Um, how would you? assess his importance and his contribution to developing the uh, theories that you've just explained? Well, there, if we go back to our observation that in the 19th century, uh, Christian Zionist um, uh, religious or, or theological, mission, missionological um, aspirations, um, became fused with a Brit British foreign policy competing with the French, first of all, at the beginning of the 19th century. Napoleon, for example, was the first world ruler to promise the Jews a homeland in 2000 years. And uh, during the First World War, um, Britain and Germany were both competing with each other, not just for territory in Europe, but also for the sympathies of the Jewish community to assist uh, their, their war effort against the other. And the Balfour Declaration uh, was issued in part to preempt a German declaration promising the Jews a homeland. So if we see um, the, the development of Christian Zionism in the late 19th century, early 20th century, as, uh, as a form of uh, colonial expansion in the Middle East, European colonial expansion, uh, then you can see parallels with Ireland and the way in which uh, the English or the British um, uh, occupied Ireland militarily and sought to colonize and exploit uh, uh, the Irish people. So it's not surprising perhaps today that uh, one finds um, the uh, Israeli flag being flown within certain Protestant circles in, uh, in Northern Ireland and uh, broad sympathy among Republicans for uh, the Palestinian cause. They can empathize with the Palestinians in, in many ways. I just let me let me just summarize, if you like, the significance of Christian Zionism. Um, it, it is a modern uh, theological, it's a political movement. It embraces the most extreme ideological positions of Zionism. Uh, they out Zion the Zionists in many ways. Um, and therefore it's become deeply detrimental to a just peace between Palestine and Israel. Uh, it pro propagates a worldview in which the Christian message is reduced to uh, the idea of, of empire, uh, colonialism and militarism. And this causes uh, deep and profound uh, negative impacts for the indigenous church right across the Middle East. Um, but what, what deeply concerns me even more is that um, Christian Zionism is, is probably 10 times larger as a movement than uh, Jewish Zionism. Um, advocates of, of the Christian Zionist movement um, claim to have at least 50, 60, 70, even 100 million advocates. On, on their, uh, their statistics, it shows that the Christian Zionist movement is at least 10 times larger than, uh, than the Jewish Zionist movement itself. You can see why there is a a relationship between the two and how Christians, sadly, are perpetuating the conflict in the Middle East today. Thank you very much, uh, Stephen, for 
um, explaining Christian Zionism, how it arose and, and its impact. Um, the Middle East Council of Churches have declared that Christian Zionism is a heresy, and you have explained that it is very detrimental to the uh, future of Christian presence in countries like Palestine, Iraq, uh, and, and, surround, uh, and surrounding countries. So it really is important, not only for uh, peace in the Middle East, for peace in the region, but also for the future of the Christian church in the place where it began its birthplace. So thanks very much, Stephen, and we'll, um, we'll now uh, say goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.